Well, hello everyone. I'm very excited about this. Um, if you wander through the Adelaide Fringe Guide under comedy lecture section, you will notice a lunch MBA, um, which is very exciting. And it's uh, featuring Professor Longsword uh, from the MBA School of MBA Credentials. And the professor joins me now. Professor, welcome. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Oh, my absolute pleasure, Mark. And please call me Sebastian if you wish. Sebastian. Okay, I will. Thank you, Sebastian. A, a little less formal. Um, I guess the first question is, what is an MBA? Ah, well, this is the $64,000 question, isn't it? It's, uh, it's short for a Master of Business Administration. It's a sought-after uh, degree that many people uh, want. And the reason they'll tell you they want one in business circles is uh, they want to improve their skills. They want to lift to that next level. But I can tell you this, the main reason they want it is because most MBAs end up earning a lot more money than everybody else in the office. And that's the truth. Uh, and of course, the other thing, this is, uh, I'm letting you in on a few secrets here, Mark. Uh, the other thing is, when you're an MBA, you don't necessarily need to know everything. You just need to know how to talk to the people who know everything and convince them because you're there almost as a, a way of supporting them, giving them confidence to know you're in their midst. Uh, you, uh, we teach you many ways to deflect questions that might expose any vulnerabilities uh, because you're not there for that. You're there to make everybody feel calm. Uh, and the other thing, of course, with an MBA is um, we equip you with models models. There are at least 25 key models we teach you. What do I mean by that? I mean that when you're confronted by a problem, you don't just have a stab at it. You look for the perfect model. What is the best way to slice and dice this? And if I may, Mark, one of the most popular ones is the old, uh, you may be familiar with this yourself, uh, Kotler's eight-step uh, change model. Do you use this yourself? Yes, just an hour ago. Very good. Well, uh, this is how I use it. I mean, I, I cut it down to four because I think four is more than enough for any model. One is if you want change, let's say you've got children at home, teenagers, they're not doing what you want. The first uh, rule is to create urgency. So if you want them to wash the dishes, for example, you could uh, say no dinner for you or no Wi-Fi. And the, the next thing is to form a powerful coalition. So this is where you need to make sure that no other householder near you has Wi-Fi they can access. So you need to talk <laughs> on that front. Uh, that's a good way. Then, of course, remove obstacles. And if the obstacle is that the lounge is too comfortable, well, an MBA would think let's tip it upside down. If, if their room, their bedroom is too private, just screw the doors off the hinges, whack up a few security cameras and you get rid of those obstacles. And of course, the fourth one is, and this is the key, create little short-term rewards along the way. So drop some food and some snacks to lead them to the kitchen and maybe give them access to uh, Wi-Fi over a cord, a connected uh, connection, <laughs> so it keeps them tethered to the sink. See, that is how an MBA can change your life. I like the way you've combined a couple of those. That's very clever. What is an MBA school? Ah, uh, Well, this is, um, <laughs> I think if I might say, one of the most forward-thinking schools uh, here in Adelaide. Relatively new. I began it in 2018. Uh, there's a long story behind that. We might get into that another time. But uh, in essence, I've been seeing that a lot of uh, uh, schools, if you go to your favourite search engine, you type in MBA, you'll see that they're all screaming that uh, like, uh, everything's short and everyone gets a, an accelerated MBA, a mini MBA, all this stuff. We forget, of course, that there's a great heritage here. Yeah. And the thing about the school is we want you to enjoy your time at school. Mm. In how many more of us would actually do a university degree if you could do it while having a beautiful steak or a barramundi or a, or a pulled lamb a salad, for example? That, that makes more sense. And so that's what we've done. In fact, uh, we have an, a secret agenda, Mark, and that is to overturn the 1986 fringe benefits tax, which mm. ruined the business lunch, mm. which has had a cascading effect through all of the, uh, the restaurateurs and all the support industries. And we want to bring back the business lunch because that is where back of the envelope math is done. That's where people dream grand schemes. I can tell you this, I bet the Adelaide Oval redevelopment began its life on a napkin 
in a restaurant in the back streets of Adelaide. I'll put my house on that. Mm, yeah, things certainly fell apart, didn't they, when uh, when that tax, uh, when they made those changes to the, the, that tax, no doubt about it. I'm really interested, Professor. Yes. Why an hour? Uh, explain the hour. Well, it fits into a busy life. Uh, mm. It's one thing, I mean, let's say the, the, the NBA, when it began, was two years. Would you believe that? Two years yeah. when, when they began back in 1881. Joseph Wharton was the man who crafted the first one. Two years. It's too long. They, uh, this, is, this is a day and age where you can binge watch a whole series of television in an afternoon. So uh, we think education should keep pace with, uh, with culture. So yeah, some of them get down to a year, three months. That's not really short, but a lunchtime's perfect. I was speaking to a young lass today uh, who was uh, coming to our school to do a lunchtime MBA, and uh, she said she's intrinsically lazy and loses uh, attention very quickly. And so our MBA was the perfect choice uh, for her. So you come, you have entree, you have a nice little glass of wine or two, and you get to meet and mingle with your lecturer, and you leave with a graduation certificate. Now that's civilized. You, you pay the check, you leave with a graduation certificate. I, I just can't think of a, a better model for adopting learning uh, than that. I'm surprised that if she was lazy, that wasn't too long for her. Um, Professor, what about, <laughs> what about some of the topics? The topics are fascinating. I've had a look at some of them, but I'd love you to go through some of those. Well, of course, I, I love, I, I catch the, uh, the, the the train into the city and then the tram around to our little offices at 144 King William Street, and I get plenty of reading time, and I, I like digesting books. And there's a wonderful book called uh, The Honeybee Democracy, in which a, a, a fine fellow has looked at how bees make decisions. Mm -hmm. And would you believe that when they go to select a new hive, the scouts gather, a few hundred scouts, and off they go, and they come back. And the way they communicate to make a collective decision is they do what's called a waggle dance. Mm -hmm. Let's think about this. Mm -hmm. uh, they come back, and their mode of, of, of communication is, is to wiggle and, and waggle, point in the direction, and the, here's the insight. The more ferocious the dance, the more they believe it's a good choice. Now, at an MBA, how do we translate this to the office? Well, well, here's here's something, and, and this has been picked up by a barrister at law, I kid you not, here in Adelaide, who wants to bring this into the federal court. Um, too many people in meetings and in, in deposition hearings in, in the court, um, they drag on, they drone on. Imagine if the only way you could communicate your idea was to get on all fours on the boardroom table, <laughs> waggle waggle your posterior and let the others judge how much your heart's in it by how much you waggle. And of course, for those members who, who might not have mobility, uh, they should be given a budget to outsource. There are plenty of people out there who waggle posteriors for a living who would look to earn a little bit of extra money to come in and, and give great service uh, in the office. Uh, that's just uh, one of the ideas, Mark. There are plenty more, but that, that's, uh, that's a taste. I, 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 I love it. I love it. I was just having visions of certain people getting on all four. Anyway, I won't go there. Um, <laughs> what, what about upcoming short courses and stuff like that? Well, again, the, the, the crux of our school is to take MBA thinking and apply it in all walks of life. Now, uh, you and I, we, we both in our time have enjoyed uh, many of those uh, special sessions where they have wine and food pairing. It's a, it's a wonderful mm. art. Mm. But I want to take that further. We're going to have wine and textbook pairing. <laughs> Isn't that magnificent? So imagine you grab Philip Kotler's wonderful tome on marketing, uh, which is nice and thick, heavy, rather bland. Um, I will be looking for the perfect wine to accompany that. And I can let you in on a secret. I think it's going to be a Pinot Noir and a particularly green and hard to enjoy wine so that there's nothing distracting you away from that turgid book. And so that is the key uh, to those sorts of things. I mean, there's other things too. Uh, one, in fact, I don't know if you're very well connected to, to Maggie Beer or not, but we're putting our feelers out for someone of her ilk uh, for our accounting discipline, because we want to have a wonderful elective on cooking books with verjuice. We, we think if you're going to cook your books, uh, make it delicious. And nobody knows how to do that better. Uh, you know, get the beautiful flavors and then someone of such an august stature as that. So the sky's the limit. We're always looking for ways to make what we're teaching uh, palatable to, to everybody. This is, this is, Professor, this is revolutionary and it's, it's so exciting. So 
if someone would like to get an MBA where it takes just an hour, I still keep thinking back to that woman who was lazy and, and her just trying to grind to the end of the hour. But I think people would love this. When and where? Oh, look, all through our, we have a very special Adelaide Fringe semester. Mm. Uh, and so every single working day during the Fringe, that's from the, uh, the 22nd of February through to the 19th of March, Monday to Friday, at 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. That's all it takes at Treasury 1860. Uh, which is at 144 uh, King William Street, opposite the old GPO. And uh, uh, there are also, would you believe, through the Fringe Ticks website, the ability to buy not just a ticket to our show, but a meal and show ticket. And for those uh, very uh, passionate uh, mm -hmm. adherents and potential students, uh, we ask them to come a bit early, about quarter past 12, so they can enjoy their meal and be ready for a gruelling well, gruelingly enjoyable one hour in which uh, I will take them through the basics of the MBA and they will leave and we'll finish with our graduation uh, photograph as they're all holding their MBA certificates aloft and off they go to change the world one sip of wine at a time. And change their life. Professor, this is just wonderful. I don't know why it hasn't been thought of before. I'm glad you've thought of it. I wish you well. I'm very grateful uh, for you being able to chat to me. I know you've been very, very busy with lectures and a whole range of other things and getting on all fours. <laughs> <laughs> remiss of me not to have congratulated you too you were in our new year's honors list getting an honorary mba so congrats you'll be busy too there could be a lecture circuit ahead that needs mark aston at the helm i'm very grateful professor thank you very much indeed this has been wonderful Toodle pip